Hi, and welcome to Best in Tesla. We all know by now that Tesla will talk about their 1 million mile battery at Battery Day. But there is so much more. It started as a battery and drivetrain investor day, but I think they had so much to talk about with just batteries that they could not boil it down to just one presentation. Because the 1 million mile battery is just the tip of the iceberg. Battery day will be the day the ice car dies. Who killed the ice car? Well, it will be Tesla. So let's take a look at the iceberg beneath the waters and let's dive right in. Let's talk about some of all the other stuff they will probably talk about at Battery Day. Because they have so much more to show us, with the next gen battery cell it will probably be some kind of mix of all the small things we have heard about through the years. Using Maxwell's dry electrode ba battery, which first of all will probably have more capacity, just like when they went from the battery cell from the Model S to the Model 3, the capacity in the new cell was about 30% more. So maybe we will see something like this again, a 30% boost in capacity, or maybe even more. This will mean they could make a cheaper car, or with more margin, or with longer range. Yeah, I do think Tesla already teased us with this when they revealed the Roadster. They said that car would have a 600 mile range or a thousand kilometers, and the Cybertruck have got a 500 mile range. I do believe Tesla is counting on the new battery cells to deliver this kind of range, so I think they will definitely announce a 1000 km range battery or maybe much more. Because they kind of already did announce the 1000 km range, because if you give it 30% more capacity, but they also gonna make it lighter because of the drive electrodes, then that alone will also give the car a longer range. So it's definitely gonna be exciting to see the specs they will reveal. But wait, there is more. Because Tesla also bought Hybar, whose expertise is in production of batteries. So this will mean faster production, meaning more batteries, meaning cheaper batteries. And combined with the dry cell technology, which is also much faster to produce because you don't have to wait for the battery to dry. You can just spit them out, no waiting which will also make the production even faster. So Hybar and Maxwell technology combined is going to be huge when it comes to scaling up production. And this is really key to scaling up and getting the price down for the battery cells. Because of the economy of scales is what really is going to get the price down. Like with solar panels in China, where they flooded the whole industry with cheap solar panels and got the price down. Even though the so-called expert said that solar will never get down to the price it is today, where solar and wind is the cheapest way to get electricity. The economy of scale cannot be ignored. And Tesla will flood the industry with cheap batteries. They are going to produce 10 times more batteries than the biggest producer of batteries is doing today. Of course this will make the batteries much much cheaper. But we will also start getting more batteries from competitors and other battery manufacturers and from old EVs that can't use the batteries anymore. Former Tesla CTO J.B. Strabble has even started his own recycle startup company Redwood Materials to focus on recycling batteries. This will furthermore flood the industry with cheap batteries, getting all these materials from all the old batteries. And Tesla could become the auto industry's first company that can achieve a true closed loop battery recycling, because Tesla has talked about this for years. And they will of course reuse the old car batteries for battery storage. 
because when a car battery no longer good enough to be a car battery, it is still good enough to be a power wall. And if you take the Model 3's battery that is 75 kilowatt hour and say it only has 70% capacity left, then it would still have more capacity than 3.5 power wall. 3.88 power wall to be exact. So batteries to storage will also become much cheaper because they will be made from old car batteries. And all this will drive the price of a battery cell lower. So the $100 per kilowatt hour we have been talking about is still too high if you ask me. I believe we are already close to this $100 per kilowatt hour today. As I talked about in my last news episode, CATL in China is very close to this target and they are working with Tesla on new battery technology. And the $100 per kilowatt hour battery is important because that is when the electric car will reach parity with the ICE car. But I believe the electric car will get much cheaper still because Tesla and others haven't even started ramping up production of the battery yet. When we will get 10 to 20 times more batteries flooding the industry, the price will fall significantly. So I believe Tesla will announce a price per kilowatt hour that is more like $50 per kilowatt hour within the next five years. I believe the price could go as low as $20 per kilowatt hour in 10 years. So EVs will become much cheaper than ICE cars and thereby killing the ICE car. Because why would anyone buy an ICE car that is more expensive to buy and to maintain and pollute the air around you with toxic gas and noise? No one will buy a gas car anymore at that point. And keep in mind the EV will probably be able to go way over a thousand kilometers or maybe even more and at that point charge much faster than it does today. So there will be no benefits left for the ICE car. Then it is just a question of how long it will take the whole industry to switch to make only EVs because nobody wants to buy the gas car anymore. And with the target of one terawatt hour production of batteries, maybe Tesla will even start selling their batteries and powertrains to other car manufacturers. If you can't beat them, join them. But wait, there are more. Tesla is also working on a vehicle to grid, meaning your car can be part of the grid just like a power wall. And it makes perfect sense. The Model 3 has a battery power that is equivalent to 5.5 power walls. Take my family for example and our Model 3 with a 75 kilowatt hour battery. We only use all that power when we take really long trips. But in our everyday commute we use something like 30%. We charge it to 80% capacity and when we plug it in at night we have about 50% left. And 50% of a 75 kilowatt hour battery is 2.7 power walls. And that is if we only charge it to 80%. If we charge it to 90%, we will have what is equivalent to about 3.3 power walls left in the battery. And Tesla is developing software called AutoBetter that can control all of this. They have learned all this with their virtual power plant they have made in South Australia. So Tesla could control when you buy and sell your electricity and store it in your Tesla making sure you get the cheapest electricity bill on the planet. That is probably why they have asked for a license to sell electricity in the UK. And this will also help with all the fear that people have that the grid can handle all these EVs. But EVs could actually be a part of the solution. There will not only be millions of EVs charging on the grid, but there will also be millions of EVs helping the grid. And when we are talking about a longer lifespan, the 1 million mile battery of your Tesla, it is not only for your Tesla to become a robot taxi, but also to be part of the grid and become a power storage device. Because longer lifespan, meaning it can charge and discharge maybe three to five times more than it can today, which will be important. So all this combined, I think Tesla is going to destroy the ICE car, but also show the rest of the industry that hasn't even caught up yet how far behind they really are and they have no chance to catch up. So Tesla's battery day 
could be the day we will remember in history as the day Tesla killed the ice car. And Tesla showed the world how they will become the biggest car manufacturer in the world. Because I think they will still blow our minds and we still don't get the whole picture, even though we may be right on all accounts, like longer lifespan, the million mile battery and, and the longer range, over 1000 kilometers or maybe 2000, the faster production because of Hybron and Maxwell and thereby getting to one terawatt hour of production a year, getting the price down on battery to maybe as low as $50 per kilowatt hour, making your Tesla become a storage system on wheels being part of a virtual power plant and the grid and of course the robo taxi as well but battery day i think is a day that is going down in history not just in the car industry i believe this battery day will be remembered as the day the world transitioned or at least made the shift towards a whole new energy system in a hundred years they will look back and say can you remember when we digged up oil from the ground and burned it for power <laughs> man were they stupid but what do you think they will reveal here at battery day and what have i forgotten let me know in the comments below hope you enjoyed this video if you did don't forget to hit that like button it really helps out the video so others can find it here on youtube and if you're new here please consider subscribing i come out with videos like this all the time and a news episode every sunday about tesla elon musk and everything in between if you're already a subscriber thank you so much for your support if you want to support the show even more, remember, you can for as little as $1 show your support for this show on Patreon. So head over to patreon.com slash bestintesla and choose your level of support. To all you patrons already supporting this show, well, words really aren't enough to show my appreciation for all your support. Thank you so much, guys. And thank you for watching. And until next time, take care out there and... Be nice.